Hi guys, uh, how are you all today? All good? Um, so I'm here to talk to you about how I got into a more um, classic geography career. Um, so hopefully you'll find it interesting and maybe useful. Um, so to start with, um, I'll just give you a bit of a background to, to me um, and then I'll talk to you about how, um, why I'm interested in the industry that I'm now working in. Um, and then I'll talk in more detail about uh, the career path that I've followed. Um, and then a bit of advice and then time for questions if anyone's got any at the end. So uh, I graduated from here last July uh, with Geography with International Study. Um, I undertook mainly physical modules except in my first year when you have to take a mixture of the two. Uh, so that includes GIS um, and I went on the Morocco field trip. I don't know if that one's still running or... but. Um, and then my third year, I actually went on the exchange program. Um, I went to University of British Columbia, which is in Vancouver in Canada. Um, like I said, it's probably the best choice I've made. Um, I don't know if it's still the same, but you, you were required to get a 2-1 or higher at the second year. Um, so I went out to Vancouver at the end of my second year and came back in uh, May. And, and while I was over there, I got to do some really exciting courses. Um, so I got to do advanced GIS. Um, things like Canadian Arctic, uh, environment and sustainability. Um, it's a great opportunity to travel, especially in the, the place that I was with Canada and uh, the USA right at my doorstep, basically. Um, I was able to make friends from all over the world, so now I've got contacts in America, in Australia, I can go out to visit. And it's been a really great talking point in interviews since. So in my last two um, jobs, it's, I think it's been the first thing they've asked me about. I think people are just quite interested. So here are just a few of the pictures. Uh, so our, own, our campus had its own beach. Uh, got to travel to Lake Louise in the Rocky Mountains. Uh, got to ice road truck across the Athabasca Glacier. San Francisco, uh, learnt to ski in Whistler, and got to go to LA a couple of times. So anyway, I came back uh, in my third year and started my dissertation. Um, I carried out a pilot study before I went to Canada. Um, planned to carry out my main study in Canada, but due to transport and other things like equipment issues over there. Um, I had to do it when I came back. Uh, and I somehow managed to make uh, a contact from another university as well. That was really helpful. He gave me lots of good ideas because he was into um, the field of caving, which is what my dissertation was on. And then I got a surprise award at the graduation ceremony, which was uh, a nice surprise. But, um, and these are just a couple of pictures from when I went out to do my dissertation in the caves. Um, but anyway, moving on to um, sort of after university. Um, so when I graduated, I always knew I wanted to stay within geography. Um, I really enjoyed GIS throughout university. I did it in my second, uh, third and my final year. Um, I don't know if anyone's done any GIS yet. Um, I know we, we only started in the second year, I think. But if, if you don't know, um, there's a, a summary of what it actually is, so it's um, a computer system basically designed um, for you to manipulate geographic data. Um, it benefits organisations all across the world in all different sectors um, and it's growing. Uh, so for example, GIS is used in military, um, it's used in academia, it's used by the NHS. So for example, if ambulance needs to find the best route to get from one place to the other, it's used in the oil and gas industry, it's, it's used commercially, it's sort of used everywhere. I think I saw, I saw a job advert for a GIS analyst for Tesco, like they were wanting to um, find the best location for a new store. So all sorts of things like that. And importantly, it's growing as well, so it's, um, so it's a big field. Um, so when I graduated, um, I came across the Defence Geographic Centre. Um, so in March of my final year, I applied for a position as a geospatial analyst. Um, so the Defence Geographic Centre is part of the MOD, the Ministry of Defence. Um, and in summary, it provides geographic information to defence. Um, so I'm just going to give you some detail now, because in my second year, I wasn't completely sure about where geography could take me. So, um, so basically, the DGC um, deals with two types of requests. Um, so these are ad hoc, so it might be for a single event. Um, such as flooding, so if um, the military need to help in relief efforts, or it might be longer term planned work, which included the Afghanistan tasks. 
Um, so as it says here, a quest may start off as an ad hoc one, but um, it may turn into a long-term requirement. Um, so for example, when Camp Bastion was established uh, over a decade ago, um, that actually started as an ad hoc request. Um, and just a little bit more detail, um, so the DDC are part of a 29 nation programme um, to capture data from all across the world. Um, so they're responsible for producing mapping of, uh, for example, <coughs> compounds in Helmand province, um, that, and that was to improve battlefield and situational awareness. Um, so the programme worked with um, the US Marine Corps Intelligence Agency to capture um, 200,000 compounds um, and more than um, a thousand large-scale maps covering quite a large area. Um, but now the DDC um, are looking towards making use of more use of human geography. Um, so this is, here is a quote from one of the directors here who's talking about um, the need to merge sort of physical and human geography to get a greater intelligence. Um, so now they're starting to recognise sort of things like the dem demography and the social political issues going on as well. Um, so I thought I would include something about the application process because um, I thought it might be quite useful. Um, so as I said before, I applied uh, back in March of my final year here at Manchester. Um, so all the people who work at the Defence Geographic Centre um, were required to have an A-level in geography and preferably a geography-related degree. Um, so do, me doing GIS um, really helped during the application process. But having said this, um, someone who started with me uh, hadn't done any GIS. She had a Masters in Geography, but so it wasn't essential. Um, and then in the assessment centre, uh, I was tested on my geography skills, including map work. Um, so it sounds quite simple if, if you've used maps before, but if you haven't, um, that was something to look out for. So in November, uh, I started my job there. Uh, and then, so since then I was responsible for producing maps that our military would use for training and operations. So now um, I'm going to talk about how geography here at Manchester helped me in my daily role as a geospatial analyst at the DGC. Um, so firstly I used my GIS skills on a daily basis, um, which is very helpful. Um, but also other skills that um, you wouldn't directly maybe not think about include teamwork research and presentations. So all of that practice I had at university was really helpful in this, in this uh, employment. So for example, I was in, in my, one of my training programs, I was required to research an area of interest to defence and then present that to um, a group of people. So when you're doing it at university, they do come in handy when you're actually employed as well. Um, so some of the great benefits that um, I got from working there um, include uh, being able to really build upon my skills that I gained at uni um, and applying them to an actual real business need. Um, whilst I was there, I became a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society and uh, they were supporting me to become chartered. Um, they paid for my membership to the British Cartographic Society, which means um, I can keep up to date with everything in terms of the cartographic world. So next week I can go to, um, there's a lecture in London from a BBC weather presenter about weather mapping. So I'm going to go to that because that sounds quite interesting. Um, they also had special paid leave um, for volunteering work whilst working there. Um, so for example, I went into schools um, to deliver workshops to year 10 and 11 students um, about the value of mapping. And basically they had to produce a mapped response to um, the Japanese tsunami. Um, so, and also I got great training at um, the Royal School of Military Survey in Esri, who are the software um, providers for ArcGIS, well, one of them. Um, but um, a few months ago I decided I wanted a new challenge, um, but also to remain within the field of GIS. Um, so I looked towards the Coal Authority. Uh, so the Coal Authority are a non-departmental government body, which basically means they have um, requirements um, that have to be fulfilled by the government, but also we have our own private commercial um, 
issues that we manage. So basically we manage the effects of past coal mining, we're not exploration. Um, so this includes dealing with the legacy of mining, so water pollution and things like that. So for example, we have these mine water treatment schemes um, that we operate. So these prevent over 4,000 tonnes of coal per year coming into our water courses. Um, so as a result of our work, uh, there's been an improvement in water quality. Um, so that helps to pre preserve our streams and rivers. And, and that's important for aquatic life and for our drinking water. And here's just an image of the classic uh, water course filled with iron. Um, so part of my role is to work on the interactive viewer. So if you guys have tablets or smartphones or anything, you can actually visit this website, type in where you live, and you can see if you live on any areas that have been affected by coal mining. So if, if you're buying a house, for example, you want to know if the shaft's located underneath, it's pretty important that you check that out. Um, so yeah, talk about the application process. Um, a little bit more simple than the, the first career that I went into. Um, so I submitted an application form for the position of GIS analyst, invited to an interview. Um, actual role went to an internal candidate because, but because they like my uh, GIS background and experience gained here, they actually created another role for me. So in September, just a couple of months ago, I joined uh, the organisation as uh, one of their GIS analysts. And it's my responsibility for um, developing GIS products um, using my GIS skills. Um, so at the minute I'm working on four projects, um, as well as a range of uh, requests that I get randomly from the organisation. So in terms of how geography is helping um, in this uh, role, again I'm using all my GIS skills learned in my second, third and fourth years and applying this to um, the organisation. But also, um, unlike the last one, um, I've been taking bits from loads of modules that I gained whilst at university. So I did river catchment dynamics in my second year, and that's really helped me understand like, all the geochemical aspects of, of what goes on at the Coal Authority with things like the mine water treatment schemes. But also more general skills again um, include teamwork and research. I think they're the two key areas that are really helping me at the minute. So for example, at the minute part of my remit is also to provide GIS help to our research and development programme. So some of the benefits of working here, um, I'm getting to use my GIS skills in um, a more commercial environment. Um, I've got now close links uh, due to various projects with the British Geological Survey and the Environment Agency as well. I get to go on some great training, so last week I was doing a Python programming course, next week I'm doing FME in Birmingham and then in December I'm getting to uh, really improve my GIS skills even further by doing another course uh, at Esri. Um, people around me um, within the Coal Authority have been put through um, degrees, uh, masters, PhDs, so that's something that I could look towards in the future. Um, also, I'm getting chartership support as well. Um, so, I know it's a little too early for you guys yet, but uh, we are recruiting. Last year we had a trainee development programme. Uh, we're recruiting again for one next year. So it's highly likely that by the time you guys are graduating that we're probably recruiting again. Um, so just to give you a bit of background, um, we're recruiting three graduates uh, into three different teams, one of which is mining information, which is my team, uh, public safety and subsistence, and one that might be of interest to you guys is environment. A basic requirement is a 2-2 in geography. Um, applications open in December and if anyone's interested um, I've brought along some of the material that we're using um, to advertise the vacancies so I'll leave these here um, and this is just the website if you wanted to have a look um, but it's also on the back of these flyers um, and then just some general advice because um, I've been here as well um, I'd say plan ahead would be a good idea. 
Um, so like I did a pilot study before I went out to Canada, that was really helpful for me. I learned a lot by doing that for my dissertation. But um, maybe a summer placement. Um, voluntary work is always good um, for when you're applying for jobs. Um, in my final year here, I did um, the Royal Geographical Society Geography Ambassador Programme. So I went out to a few schools and gave presentations similar to this about um, where you can go with geography. Um, and I was also a past leader. You can always do paid work. That's always handy when interviews come. And final year, this is just personal opinion, but a lot of people worry a lot about getting a job and maybe spend too much time applying for jobs rather than concentrating on the degree. So I applied for a couple, but people around me had applied for lots. Um, but if it's sort of a personal preference. Um, I'd say be organized, plan your time well. Um, so in terms of future for me, um, I'm aiming to get this charter job for that I've mentioned a couple of times. Um, basically, it's um, if you've got skills in a certain area, um, you have to show evidence. And after six years, um, if you have c contributed to the field of whatever you're aiming to become chartered in, which in my case is geography and in particular GIS, and you are awarded this recognition. Um, I'd like to volunteer for Map Action in the future, which are basically a charity organisation who go out to um, disaster areas um, such as after tsunamis, earthquakes, and they basically provide hazard, um, sorry, uh, response mapping to help with the relief efforts. Um, so that's something to look at if you're interested in that. So at the minute they're doing some maps for the Ebola crisis. And next year I'm doing the London Marathon, so quite a mixture. Um, so yeah, has anyone got any questions at all? Um, and this is just a picture of the interactive uh, view of it, which if you guys are interested in, which shows you in Manchester to the northeast, there's some mine shafts, things like that, if anyone's interested. If anyone's got any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. No, no questions. All right, thank you.